I had a customer yesterday email me that he was having trouble knowing what was the best way to exactly locate holes for a project he had to do. So I'm going to show you on VCarve how to do that, and there's a couple different ways to do it, is whichever way makes better sense to you. But I'll show you that on how I recommend he do it. And I emailed him the instructions I was going to do the video. I told him that I was going to do the video, but he saw my instructions, did it, and he already had the project cut before I had uh, been able to put together this video. So thanks for watching. Okay, uh, I'm laughing because this is the third or fourth time I've recorded this. My headphones keep turning off because I didn't have audio coming into them. Um, so I, would, I was talking away doing the videos, and it wasn't recording the microphone. So um, this is the project that he needed. He needs to make 32 of these. It's quarter-inch Lexan. It's basically 20 by 23. He's got eight holes in them. They're 5 sixteenths. They're through holes, and they're located four inches from... The corners basically from each corner but the corners are going to be cut out because there's a four inch radius or four inch fillet so 20 by 23 four inches in half inch up to the center line so i'm going to alt tab to switch back over to vcarve pro so typically if i'm going to do a project like this and i have a bunch to cut he's got 32 of them i would just work at the part level when i design it and then i'll change the material size so i worked it's 23 by 20 quarter inch tall touching off on the surface of the material using the bottom left-hand corner as my XY datum. So by doing this, basically I think of this as a sheet of graph paper. And this is X positive, the X negative. This is Y positive, and that's Y negative. So this is my zero, zero point. So I would first put in my rectangle, and from my zero, zero point I want it to be 23 by 20. The values are already populated because I've already drawn it and had to redo it because I lost the video. And then I would fill at those corners with a four inch fillet. Touch next to, close to the corners and it will do it. And there we go. Now I want to put in my circles. So I'm going to draw a circle that's roughly, I mean, just to think of it, it's four inches this way and a half inch up. This other one was 19 inches this way and a half inch up. Let's go back to the drawing to see it. So four inches this way, half inch up, 19 inches. And the other value is 4 and 16. So we're going to come back to this, and I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, and it's going to be, I always put in the value first, so it's 5 16 5 divided by 16 equal. And it'll do the math for you. And from here, from my 0, 0, I'm going to come 4 inches over and 0.5 up. And create it. And there we go. The other one was 19 inches that way. <clears throat> and a half inch up. Now there was also one that was above this one, so this was 20 inches tall. We want to come a half inch down, so it's going to be 19.5 in 19.5, and there we are. And this one was four inches, the one that was right here. Four, right? And then we were going to have one that was four inches up, and 0.5 over. So we're going to make the x 0.5 and 4. And we can create that. And we also had one that was 16 inches up. And we had one that was 16 inches up, but it was over here. So that's 22 and a half because it was 23 inch wide minus a half inch. So the x would be 23.5 and 16 would be there. Oh, I'm sorry, 22 and a half. Bad, bad math. And this one was at four inches in Y. So we're there. We're done. That's our complete drawing. I'll grab this one and delete it. Hit the delete key. And then that's what I want to do. So I'll take this one and now I'll go back in and I'll save it. I'll call it the Lexan job. Drilling exact holes. Again, I've already done this. I had just lost the audio to the recording. And then I would change my material size to the size of the panel that I'm working with. So this is a 4896 panel of Lexan, Lexan, tell it OK, and then I want to nest it, and I'm using a quarter inch tool, I want three quarters of an inch between parts, one inch around the border around it so I can screw this down into my table, I don't know how he's holding his parts down, he, I don't know whether he's built a, a, a vacuum table to run with a shop vac, I have no idea, so any number of different ways to do this, and it, it really won't matter, but on this, we, we want to go with... Um, this is active sheet, all good. 
I want to highlight the things that I want to nest, and that's got the border cut and the holes, and I want 32 of those, and apply that. It tells me there's 32, and then I can preview it. And so it nests them and shows me my nests. That's what I want to do. That's it. I'm ready to go. So I've got that one ready. So we'll jump over to Toolpath this, and I'll zoom in. And I would do a, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. You could do a profile toolpath, and I'm just going to grab all of the uh, circles. So I'm drawing an arrowed, I mean an angled box from left to right, top to bottom. Anything that's totally captured by that will be selected, but anything that's not totally captured will not be selected. So it's getting the circles, but it's not getting the basic rectangle shape with the fillets. So that's all of my holes that I need to do. And I'm going to come and I'm going to cut into it the thickness of the material, which would be T plus 20 thousandths equal. So it's 0.27 depth of cut. I'm using a quarter inch bit. You can look at your tool settings and things like that. That's not the idea of what he needed to see. I need to be on the inside of those circles. And we need to check this. Uh, and then we'll say I want to add a ramp to that. So what it's basically going to do, it's going to go in there and just start working its way in and, and kind of pocketing in a spiral action its way down. You could also do a pocket. It doesn't matter. It warns us that we're going through. And what I like to do at this point is to uh, zoom in and change it to see the toolpath so I know that I'm inside that. Sometimes when you grab some geometry, you'll grab a vector, and you may be on the wrong side of that vector depending on how that vector was drawn. So you want to make sure always that you're on the inside of those holes rather than the outside of the hole because we, we got to select that. If we double click here, we got to be on the inside of the outside. And sometimes you'll say on the outside because you drew the rectangle basically backwards. So you want to turn this blue tool on so you see the blue. where That's where the tool's cutting. Okay, so that's got that done. And now we want to do the... Uh, the rectangles themselves. So I'm going from right to left. Let's see, I thought I could just select that. Okay, I can. And it's, it's not grabbing the circles. It's just grabbing the profile cuts. Uh, I should have been on profile cut first. And I'm going to do the same depth of cut, same tool, and I want to be on the outside of that. And depending on how you're cutting it, this is Lexan, so we want to just move through it. I'm not going to do tabs. I'm going to assume he's standing with it and it's just going to lift up or he's using a tape method or he's using a vacuum hold down. There's any number of different ways to get into your cutting strategies and I'm not going to define those until I know more about how he's set, setting them up. Yep, it warns us that we're going to go all the way through. And again, I like to zoom in and reset the preview, preview all, and there we are. There's our job done. There's no tabs. I didn't set up tabs and things like that, but that's our job. That's it. Now. The other way to do this would be to have, I'll save it again, and I'll do a, close it and do a new job. The other way to do it would be basically the same thing, but it's a different approach. A lot of people don't use these. These are guides. This is reference guides. So I'll bring this down to here, and that's in line with the top of my 20-inch panel. And from here, I'm going to hit the right button, and I can select and make a new guide. So I'm going to make a guide that's relative to the one that's already selected, and I'm going to come down. 0.5 of an inch. Nope, should have been a negative 0.5. Come down, negative 0.5. So that is going to be in line with where I'm going to put my hole, but now I have to have a one coming across from the left, a vertical one. So if I'm doing that, I could also do another one that's uh, 19, negative 19.5, which would be the one that's here, because this was a 20-inch tall panel, and we wanted to be a half inch in. Okay, now I'm going to drag from here, from this margin, hold down the left button and let it snap there. So I've got that guideline. I'm going to come up here, hit the right button, and delete that one. That was an extraneous one that I made by mistake. So here I'm going to hit the right button, and I want to do one relative to that that's 0.5 in the positive direction. So it's a positive 0.5, and I want to do one that's uh, 22.5. Right? Uh, and then... So that's got where my holes are going to be. So that's my half inch from each border. And then I'm going to touch this top line, hit the right button, and I'm going to go relative to that guide. I want to do a negative 4 inches and a negative 16. Right? Okay, so we're going to have 
a circle here, and I need one, to have one that's four inches in from this edge. So I'm going to come to that line, hit the right button. Relative to that guide, I want to come four inches in and 19 inches in. Okay? So that may look confusing, but what that's done is if we uh, put our rectangle in, I'm not sure if I did the fillets or not. I mean, if I, I didn't put one in, so let's, let's do the rectangle first. And I'm going to put in the 23 by 20 from the bottom corner. Boom, it's in. Go ahead and do the fillets. It was a four inch radius. And then we'll go to the holes, do the circle. Same value, I'm going to leave it. But this time, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to specify the points. I'm going to come over here and just zoom in and get close and touch it. And it will center it on that hole, on that intersection. Okay, so there's my holes. And again, this is now ready to do the same thing I can. The reference lines may make sense to you and they may be difficult, but they're nice to understand that they're there because I've used them a lot when I'm doing a very complex part and I, I need to be able to think about where I am on the part. But like right now, that's a confusing drawing to have all that stuff there. I don't need them anymore. Um, and I haven't played with putting them on a separate layer where I can turn them off, off and on with the, off the light bulb. Um, so at this point, I don't need them anymore. I would just close out, go back to the selection bar, hit the right, and just start deleting them. I don't need them. Everything is located where I want them. And they're easy to put back in. That's an extra hole that I put by mistake. And there may be a shortcut to delete all the guides. But there's your part. So we'll go back in and I would change the material size to 48.96, 49.97, whatever your Lexan comes, nest it, and off you go. So two different options, two different ways to get there. Both ways work. It depends on which way makes sense to you for the job that you have. But using the reference lines is strong in certain situations. Being able to simply define exactly where a hole or an operation goes, of course, is also strong. So there's two different ways to get there. So thanks for watching. Always buy products from people that can help you. Uh, so we want to always be able to give you guys whatever help you need on the software. Uh, I like the VCarve and Vectric products, uh, and I can help you in any way you need. Be sure to come to YetiSmartBench.com to watch all of our training videos and, and demo videos, because uh, you can always pick up new tips and tricks. And that's the fun part of, of having a product like the Yeti Smart Bench.